Hello everyone, what's up? Today's video is the second in a two-part tutorial series on how to paint and weather the Lemon Ross Battle Tank. In this episode, we'll cover the whitewash winter camo and the mod effects. If this sounds interesting, keep watching! The first step is airbrushing the chipping fluid. For this, I'm using the Ammo Heavy Chipping Effects, which I'm spraying with my Pasha Talon with a 0.7mm needle at around 20 psi. The paint I'm going to use after that is the Ammo Matte White with a few drops of Ammo Acrylic Thinner. I should mention that I had applied a light coat of Ammo Satin Varnish prior to this step to fix the washes in place as well as the other products that you saw in the previous video. This is why the tank looks slightly shiny at the moment. The reason I use this and not the scratches effects, that is the regular chipping fluid, is that as the name indicates it would only create small scratches and what I want to represent is a well-worn winter camo, as it might look towards the end of winter with the first rains, as that whitewash comes streaking down the sides of the tank. Just apply a couple of coats. I flooded the model a bit more than I wanted in some areas, but even so it's self-leveled and dried really flat. Because the paint I'm using on top is acrylic, I know that it will react very strongly with the chipping fluid, making my job easier. As I explained in last week's video, this would not have been the case had I used one of my Tamiya paints with lacquer thinner. It was precisely the difficulty, sometimes impossibility, of using chipping fluid with Tamiya paints that made me try liquid mask chipping in the first place. But I'm very happy I did that. Alright, and here we see, as if by magic, the tank suddenly covered in a thin layer of white. I thought I was recording then, but I wasn't. It happens to me all the time still. So I'm sorry guys, I do apologize. In any case, spraying a bit of white paint isn't exactly rocket science, is it? Just make sure to add a couple of drops of acrylic thinner and make the coat semi-transparent. So here I'm creating the chipping using water and a large round brush. I'm being really gentle and using only vertical movements. As I said before, the whitewash would run down along those vertical surfaces, so we want to simulate that. Also, if you apply any real pressure, all the white paint will come off in big flakes. So to sum up, gentle vertical movements and the brush should be damp but not dripping wet. Bear in mind though that this step is largely a matter of taste. It depends on how worn you want that winter camo to appear. If after you finish this stage you feel like you've overdone it, there is a very simple solution. Allow it to dry completely and then apply a second coat. So to be honest, as with most things in the world of weathering, this is a very satisfying and low stress job. I know I'm a bit of a broken record, okay? But my mission at the Race for Terra, first and foremost, is to raise awareness about weathering, so to speak. It's really fun. In fact, I haven't tried a single weathering technique that I didn't thoroughly enjoy. I'll confess I'm a bit of a perfectionist by nature, and the fact that virtually all weathering techniques have a sort of reset button really makes a difference for me. It allows me to relax and to enjoy the ride a lot more. Anyway, I think this is looking quite nice already, but there are a few areas, like those spots around the engine compartment, which have kind of hard-edged patches of grey with no whitewash whatsoever. This is a bit too stark for my taste, I don't think it's realistic. So at this stage I decided to go one step further with the winter camo and try Ammo's washable white paint. But before that I'm cleaning up the tracks, preparing them for the mod effects. At this stage the tank was quite wet, so what I decided to do was to reduce the drying time by using my airbrush. This was actually quite effective, and oddly reminiscent of car detailing, which I thought was quite funny. Hey, 
And yes, I'm into car detailing as well, but don't be alarmed, I'm not going to do any car videos anytime soon. So, this is the washable white paint. I'm applying it through my Badger Patriot 105 at a pressure of around 20 psi. All I'm going to do really is to cover the patches where the chipping was to start and fill them with a light coat of white. Now, the main difference in finish between the matte white with the heavy chipping and the washable white is that the former comes off in flakes, whereas the latter gets sort of gradually faded for a more diffuse effect. Therefore, I thought that the best effect would be most likely achieved by combining the two. Now I'm once again applying water, but this time to the areas with the washable white paint. I could easily see the difference here. When in contact with the water, this washable white paint created a sort of thin watery film, which could be removed or could be allowed to settle, resulting in a sort of misty white look. This created a nice contrast with the hard-edged patches from the heavy chipping. Here I am once again drying the model with the airbrush, getting it ready for the next stage. Right on, and now we get to the mud. First I'm using loose ground from Amos Splashes line. As the name indicates, they're designed to reproduce splashes, so people usually apply these products either with a brush and a toothpick, or with a brush and the airbrush. I wasn't too sure which of the two versions to go for first, but since Mick Jimenez always recommends a toothpick, I resolved to go for that first. As you can see, I started with one of the side panels. This loose ground paint has some texture to it, like a pigment. I dampened the brush slightly, in thinner, and just took some of the product from the pot. As you can see, I'm just using the toothpick to project the mud. The thinner is entirely optional, by the way, you should try first on some paper and see how that affects the texture. And now I decided to blend the mud effects a little bit. I used a flat brush, dampened with ammo odorless thinner, and I'm only doing it vertically and applying very little pressure. I just wanted to make some of the splashes less exaggerated and to create a sort of background or canvas for the next layer of mud. For the second pass with the loose ground, I opted for the airbrush. Having done blood splatter effects with the airbrush on over 40 world eaters, I felt a lot more comfortable with this than with the toothpick to be honest. I really found the toothpick a little bit awkward. So in this case, ease of application for me was a priority, even if I could see that the blobs perhaps were less realistic in their shape with the airbrush. As with all other weathering techniques, just give it a try and decide for yourself which version you like better. Okay, so now it's time to weather the tracks. Of course, they would be covered in mud. I'm just applying the loose ground effect with the brush, which is again slightly dampened with thinner. I'm using a dabbing motion and concentrating on the middle of the tracks. At this stage, I should perhaps mention that I have several other mud related products that I could have used. For instance, I have two enamels from Ammo. Uh, from a line called Nature Effects. These have no texture and are more like a paint. And I also have several pigments which could be combined with those. But in any case, I just wanted to keep the colors consistent, so I use loose ground for the tracks as well. All right, on to the heavy stuff. This is Wet Mud from Amos Heavy Mud Line. This is a very thick paste with a lot of texture to it and it's also quite shiny. Regretfully, I knew that the finish varnish at the end of the project would eliminate this nice and realistic shine. However, I will be using a sort of secret sauce, which I will be reviewing separately, in order to ensure that whoever wins this tank in our giveaway gets some ultra-realistic wet mud effects. But I digress. So now I'm applying this wet mud with the airbrush, 
going for the side panels first. Look at that. This is already starting to take shape, substantially enhancing our previous two layers. By the way, like I said before, this is a really thick paste, so I did have to dampen the brush with thinner before, and I really recommend you do that in this case. Well, I made a huge mess in my airbrush booth, as you can see, but I'm sure you will agree with me that this was worth it. You cannot imagine the mess I made with my first 10 blood splatter world leaders. That was much, much worse. I had Tamiya clear red everywhere in my room, basically. The rear and the front of the tank should really be filthy, so I'm applying some more wet mud in both places, layering the mud, and also trying to get it into all the nooks and crannies. I'm coming in with a flat brush now, and like before, I'm blending areas where I thought there were blobs that looked out of place, or that didn't really have the shape that I liked. Like before, I'm just doing slight vertical streaks or dragging the product downwards. You see how the tracks are now magically covered in mud? You can guess what happened here. Yes, I forgot to record it once again. In any case, all I did was stipple the mud with an old dry brush, no special technique involved. Now I'm adding a bit more wet mud with the airbrush, touching up areas of the tracks or the hole where the coverage wasn't sufficient, and focusing on the area around the engine compartment, which would get really dirty. At this stage you might have noticed that I've done some suit effects on the exhaust, the side vents, and the guns. For this I use Tamiya LP5 with 70% thinner added. This is my favorite way to create suit effects, which I discovered by chance really when working on my Warhound Titan. So, a few touch-ups here and there, and the mod effects are complete! And here is the finished tank. This was my first time using either the Winter Camo or the Enamel mod products, but I'm very pleased with the overall results. In fact, I like this look so much that I've decided to apply these two techniques to all my existing German grey tanks, namely to Macarius, to Medusas, and two bombards. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and most importantly, I hope that whoever wins the tank will be very happy with it. I'll be announcing the results in the comments feed later tonight, on Twitter, and the winner will be getting an email from me, of course. So if you want more step-by-step -step weathering tutorials, subscribe now, and remember... In the grim darkness of the 31st millennium, there is only weathering.